Hey, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of the John Morris Show. So this episode, I'm just going to be talking about uh, the the launch special of my same creation course. It's now down off of Skillshare. I'm going to be launching it over on my website. I have a really good deal for you if you are someone. I do this because a lot of people don't necessarily want to do the Skillshare thing, but they still want access to the course. So I make them an offer they can't refuse. So if that's potentially you, then then you want to listen to this episode. If not, uh, no hard feelings, but that's what I'm going to be covering here. So let's go ahead and dive into it then. So I know this might seem like a big shocker to you, but it is actually possible to launch a highly valuable, beloved, and lucrative online course without creating an 87-hour magnum opus or dancing around like a drunk sorority chick. And I've created over 25 courses, taught over 30,000 plus students, earned hundreds of thousands, and spent years as a six years as a U.S. Army instructor teaching tens of thousands of soldiers deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan. And all that has proven it to me. And in this course, if you'd like, I'll show you how to do it without driving yourself crazy. So as I mentioned, I was a former military instructor, and the last six years that I was in the Army, I was training soldiers deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan. And I spent every, I I took it serious. It was a big deal to me. I'd been to Iraq. I know what it's like over there. Um, And so I took it really serious. And I spent every moment of every day thinking about how to best reach and teach those students because I knew, even if they didn't fully recognize it yet, that their lives were literally on the line. And we didn't have time for cute or dope, or epic, or any of that nonsense. The only thing that really mattered to us as instructors was impact, because you have to understand the context of this training. They were probably going through every single day, four or five classes, maybe six classes a day that they were going through for months on end. So no matter how serious the situation, no matter how dedicated and committed you might be, after months and months and months of spending, you know, four, five, six classes a day that you're being taught by all these different instructors, your are, your eyes are going to start to uh, glaze over no matter what. And so the biggest thing that we had to try and do was to try to reach them and get them to perk up and pay attention. And I taught unarmed self-defense. I taught downed aviator recovery. I taught convoy ops. I taught, taught detainee ops. I taught a whole bunch of different things when I was doing this as instructors in the military you weren't necessarily supposed to be a subject matter expert. You were a, a, an expert on how to teach. And then they would give you all sorts of different subjects to teach and you would go learn those uh, and teach them. That's what we did. And so again, what mattered was impacting those soldiers so that they paid attention and they actually learned what I was teaching. They took it serious and learned these life-saving skills that I was going to teach them. And an interesting thing happens when you teach tens of thousands of people heading into such an intense do or die situation, when their life is literally on the line and in your hands. As an instructor, all the BS, all the dumb stuff, all of that stuff gets quickly scrapped and you cut straight to the stuff that matters. And so that's probably why I get so freaking frustrated with what I'm seeing in online education these days, which is a bunch of know-nothing teachers that are dancing around like drunk sorority chicks focused on only making a quick buck with their epic montages and their dope transitions. I'm sure it's all really fun for them to create. But does it actually help the student? Does it actually help anybody learn? Does it make an impact in somebody so they take it serious and actually act on it? Or is it more just entertainment? My view of it is, is it's more just entertainment. It's doubtful that it really adds to the learning experience and helps someone learn. That's my opinion. Um, And and again, a lot of experience has brought me to the point of believing that. Even worse, though, is a lot of people get dazzled by the sizzle and they completely forget about the steak. So they start to evaluate the value of a course or video based on its production value, not the information in it. And, you know, actually learning something useful and getting results. What a novel concept, right? So it ends up being the blind leading the blind in a lot of ways. In any case, I bring all this up in relation to my same course creation course because I've noticed that all of this stops a lot of would-be course creators from creating a course. People who have tons of experience, people who have 
a lot of wisdom and a lot of value to share with other people and, and could make a tremendous impact in other people's lives, it stops them from becoming a course creator, a content creator, because they start to believe that they too have to dance around like an idiot or include a bunch of stupid and annoying transitions or tell lame jokes so their stu students feel entertained. And it causes them, maybe you, if you're here listening to this, it causes you to miss out on what I believe, in my opinion, I believe the sing is the single greatest way to create massive leverage in your business and some crazy, insane earnings, sometimes as high as $5,000 an hour for freelancers, coaches, anyone with knowledge to share. And possibly, as, as hypey as this may sound, but again, in my experience, I've, I've felt this, possibly have cash virtually pouring in month after month after month through pandemics, recessions, stock market crashes, idiotic government policies, health emergencies, and just plain old being lazy or you know wanting to take a, a, a simple day off. So let me give you an example. I have a course that I created about a decade ago that to this day is still my best selling course. It happens that the topic is fairly evergreen and I purposely created it in a way to be as future proof as I could and it's worked out pretty well. I spent maybe 30 hours in total creating it, you know, a few hours here and a few hours there over the years tweaking it and it still to this day makes me several thousand dollars each and every month all of these years later through multiple recessions, a global pandemic, the typical freelancing up, ups and downs, even a health scare that I had a few years back. Through it all, for me, for me, the, kept, the checks kept coming in, even if I did little to no work that month. Now, I haven't done all the math on it because it's a, it's a bit tricky because the course is sold in a, a number of different places, but I feel confident saying that that course has earned me at least $5,000 an hour over the years, meaning how much time I put into it versus how much time I got back. I, I'm confident in saying that it's earned me at least that much. Now, in reality, I wouldn't be surprised if it was closer to $10,000 or $15,000 uh, an hour of an hourly rate equivalent. Again, time invested versus uh, revenue back. That, to me, is the power of an online course. You create it once and you can make money off of it for years and years to come. Now, Obviously, I can't promise or even imply that you'd make the same as me, that you'd do as well as I did. You might make way more. You might make way less. You might not make anything at all. You might even lose money. Hell, I don't know because I don't know you. I don't know your work ethic. I don't know your skill set. I don't know any of that. So I can't promise or imply any of that sort of stuff. But I can show you what, what I do. And if you're smart and you have even a modicum of ambition, then I personally believe at a minimum, you'd make back way more than what you invest, especially if you're a freelancer. And that's because I believe freelancers are uniquely positioned to make bank from an online course. You're already an expert on the topic you freelance in. You already have established authority. You likely already even have an audience. So creating an online course simply opens up a new revenue stream for you and lets you still get paid from people who can't afford your full-blown service. Even better, it's a mostly hands-off revenue stream. So it doesn't create a ton of extra work for you and can create insane amounts of leverage where you're earning without actually doing anything. So you create it once and make money off it for years. So it, to me, it's just such an obvious move to make. And even if you're still just new and you're an aspiring freelancer, you're going to eventually have the knowledge and authority that I'm talking about. You're going to be working on creating that anyway. So why not leverage it from the start? Why not leverage it even more and add a, a, another revenue stream that can help you to get there faster? So again, that's why I believe freelancers are so uniquely positioned and why you have such uh, an opportunity. Now that said, I've noticed that a lot of people do miss what I consider the not so obvious ways to profit from an online course, even if you never sell a single copy. So way back in my early days of freelancing, a client of mine had me attend one of those internet marketing conferences that used to be real big. And I went there to help run a booth that they had set up there to, to talk about their particular product. And I got stuck next to this guy who was seriously in love with the sound of his voice. He loved to talk and talk and talk and talk and then talk some more about how great he was, about how great his company was, how ingenious the product they sold was, and don't forget also how great he was, in case you missed it the first 700 times he said it. 
Anyway, the product that his company sold was books, kind of. What they did was they helped people write and publish books. And they targeted, again, these internet marketing types that were so popular back then. And so as he was talking and talking and talking, he divulged kind of all of the, the company's uh, dirty little secrets. So what essentially, they, they didn't care that if they ever sold a copy of the book. The whole point was for the, first, the, the person that they helped to be able to say that they were an author. And it created some immediate credibility that they then used to get speaking gigs, TV appearances, and sell more of their products and services. I personally know one of these people who did this, who leveraged some of the early books that he wrote into appearances on Ellen and now a really, really successful podcast, interviews with Kobe Bryant and a number of other things, really using th th this method. So uh, I've seen it firsthand. I've, I've watched someone do it. I actually... Uh, this person was a client of mine. I don't want to give out names or anything, but they were a client of mine at one point as well. I actually helped them uh, with a little bit uh, of this as well. So now, again, this was something that, that this particular company did. And a lot of the celebrity business people that are so popular today, this is what they did to get so popular. Again, I know because I've worked with a lot of them. Now, you can scoff and snicker at all of that. Like, it is what it is. You can have your opinion on that. I'm a little mad on the whole thing myself. But it illustrates how simply having a book book published can create instant authority and credibility. And it works. It's, I've watched it work for so many successful people. Well, the same is true for an online course, especially today because online courses have really become a lot more popular in, in certain niche, niches, especially than books. So an online course these days has a similar clout to what a book had back then. And so because of that, there are, there are a, a bunch of not so obvious ways that an online course can help your career, even if you never sell a single copy. So let me cover a few. Number one, it can create instant authority and credibility. So just like writing a book, like I talked about, simply having an online course can position you as an expert on a particular topic, and that credibility can be used to sell more stuff, open new doors, garner, garner a large social media following, get booked on radio and TV shows, become famous, almost anything that you want, and that's all even if you never sell a single copy. It can also help you get booked on radio, TV shows, podcasts, YouTube channels, and more. Now, being the curmudgeon that I am, I'm, it's somewhat annoying to me, but I constantly get emails from people wanting me to be on their podcast or their YouTube channel. I've never pursued the TV or radio thing, but I know that if I wanted to, I easily could. And someone who's smarter and less curmudgeonly than me could probably use this, uh, leverage all of this to become famous pretty quick, which obviously would help you uh, to sell even more of your stuff. So again, another way that you can profit from an online course, even if you sell, never sell a single copy. You can also create your own personable, personal UBI. So every single month, Skillshare sends me several thousand dollars for the people who watch uh, the, my courses on their site. Now, my courses on their site, people are watching them, but I'm not actually selling any copies. I'm, I'm simply getting paid for watch time. So again, I'm not actually selling any copies of these courses. And of course, I do some marketing uh, of those courses on my own, but the bulk of the revenue comes from their own internal marketing on Skillshare. And I know that because I stopped marketing it for several months, close to a year probably, um, but the Skillshare checks kept rolling in. Sure, they went down a little bit from when I marketed them myself, but not as much as what you might think. So you can put your courses on a site like that and you're not selling any copies, you're maybe not even doing any marketing, but it gets popular on that site. And next thing you know, you have that site sending you you know, thousands, hundreds, thousands, however much it is every single month. So it be, kind of becomes like your own personal UBI without the need for some corrupt politician. Another, another way you can use a course uh, is to more easily network and create valuable business connections. So I get even more of these emails, probably a dozen or so a week from online course platforms, bloggers, other businesses who saw my courses and want to work with me in some way. Now, are all of these legit and valuable? Probably not. But if I wasn't such a hermit and curmudgeon, I could easily find ways to network with these people. I'd take up more of these people up on what they were offering, and I could create some really valuable business connections. I've been doing this close to two, two decades, so... I'm not young and ambitious like a lot of people are. Uh, I, I'm mostly kind of just rolling into retirement. So I don't, I'm not 
I'm not trying to get out there and do all this kind of stuff. But if you were ambitious, if you were someone who wanted to do those kinds of things, an online course can be the key that unlocks the door to be able to get into that environment, be able to get these people contacting you. So again, that's simply what having an online course can do. It can also lead to getting free products and services. Now, this doesn't happen as often, obviously, but from time to time, I get people who will contact me and they'll want to trade courses. So another course creator who wants to trade courses, or a lot of times I'll get students who maybe can't afford the course, but they're willing to trade their services for my course. And so over the years, I've gotten a decent amount of free stuff simply from having that online course that I trade with other business people, etc. You can also use it as a simple value add or upsell to your existing services. So for example, someone invests in your service and they get your $497 course for free. That's real value for potential clients. It also makes you unique because a lot of freelancers don't create or offer their courses like this. Every little bit you add to your service offer can tip the scale in your favor and help you get hired. And an online course is a perfect value add like that. It can also be the perfect client support tool to eliminate annoying questions and misunderstandings. So it can be the perfect way for you to onboard new clients. Let's just say for an example, you build websites with an SEO tilt to them and you promise an SEO optimized site that can potentially rank better in the search engines, right? That's a, a fairly common thing, or at least it has been. I don't, maybe it isn't. I'm not tapped into the SEO community, but you know, maybe that's a still a fairly popular thing or something like that. But part of you know helping your client to have a, an SEO powered site, a site that ranks better in the search engines, it requires your client to follow some important and specific instructions when they create new content. Again, pretty common scenario. Well, instead of explaining it to every client, having to maybe get on a meeting and go through all these things or creating a checklist for, for them or whatever, you could create an SEO course that you sell but you also give it to clients as a part of your service and it shows them exactly what to do. You do the video walkthroughs, you have the whole thing laid out. So now you've, you've created a really valuable course for someone who, who maybe can't afford your full services and they wanna just take a lower price course and do it themselves, but you've also eliminated a bunch of annoying questions and potential problems that you might have with existing clients. So that's one example, and there's lots of other ways you could use it, but that's one example of how a course can serve as a perfect customer support tool for your freelance services. Another thing is just simple fame and notoriety and some bragging rights. So a few weeks back, a friend of my brother's came to visit and the inevitable question, you know, what do you do for a living question uh, came up. And I'll just be blunt and honest about it. It felt kind of good when I was able to tell him that I've taught over 30,000 plus students and hear them like see their eyes get big and almost audi audibly gasp like holy cow uh, seeing that reaction you know it won't necessarily make me a bunch of money but not gonna lie it felt pretty good so that's another thing and then of course this is, is maybe not the maybe we should cut off the part about if if you never sell a, a, a single copy but there's then of course the the, the money part right the, the fact that you're actually going to be selling this course and has the potential to bring you thousands, even hundreds of thousands in potential profit, which I know sounds crazy to some people, but over the years, little old me has hit uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in course sales. And, you know, I'm a nobody that grew up in a rat infested trailer home. Like <laughs> I, it's cliche, but I feel like if I can do it, uh, a lot, most people out there can probably do it as well. So Again, there's the money part of it, and the best thing about it is is the time that it gives you, um, especially as a freelancer. You don't have to be there day in and day out like you do with client work. You can create the course once and profit forever. And so those are some ways. There's probably a lot more ways uh, that I could list that I, I don't have here. I don't want to go on and on and on and on about it, but there's a lot of ways that you profit even if you'd ever sell a, a single copy. And then of course, the whole idea of, well, you're gonna try and sell this thing and, and the money you make from that. So all of this, all of the potential opportunity, but also all of the problems that I see and the thing that I think is holding a lot of people back, that's why I decided to create my new course on courses, which I call sane course creation. Now, the idea behind this is simple. I'm gonna show you how to create an online course that cuts out all the BS and all the unnecessary nonsense so you can tap into all the potential benefits that I just listed 
without driving yourself mad, creating an 87-hour magnum opus, or dancing around like a demon monkey on crack, right? So, so the course actually gets done instead of just continuing to be an idea in your head. And creating a course that's good, that your students will love, I dare say more, they'll love it more than the whiz-bang epic courses that the know-nothings create. And I have a lot of students that ha have told me that where they, they take courses and they feel like they just don't match up depth-wise, value-wise to what I create and because people are so focused on production value. And I'm not saying production value is not important, right? You can't, you know, be standing in a windstorm uh, delivering your course, um, but people over-engineer their courses because they're not confident in their, their content. And that's what I really want to solve for people. I've been doing this. I've done it in really intense situations like training soldiers deploying. You know, I've done it uh, uh, for over 30,000 students a number of years, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I really want to give you. Leverage my near decades worth of experience teaching online courses. Six years teaching tens of thousands of soldiers deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan, 30 plus thousand students on Skillshare alone, and hundreds of thousands of dollars earned to show you how to brainstorm, create, and sell your online course without all of the madness. That's the point of this course. So that said, if you're you're interested, let me go through some of the things that you're going to learn inside this course. I'm not going to go through everything because we'll be here all day. But I do want to give you an idea of some of the things that you're going to learn. So one of the things you'll learn is a technique used by the late, great Stan Lee to create many of Marvel's most popular characters. The Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Thor, the Incredible Hulk, and all the others that you know and love today. And grow Marvel into a gro globally recognized brand and multi-billion dollar company. And how I've used this same methodology to help your courses not just get more attention and interest, but create a fanboy-like loyalty for you, where students almost reflexively snap up every new course or product you create, just like they, uh, just like they go to Marvel movies and they snap up uh, up comic books. The same sort of fanboy-like loyalty for you, and, and they do it almost without thinking, which obviously can bring you more course sales over time. So that's one of the things that you're going to learn. That's in lesson number two. Also, show you a propaganda tool used by Joseph Stalin to create blind obedience among his closest allies and followers and an ethical way to use this technique to create raving fans and help sell more of your courses. Now, this is certainly not for the easily defended, but the method itself is really agnostic. It's kind of like a knife. It can be used for good or it can be used for bad. It can be used to you know, cut a piece of cheese or it can be used to stab someone. The, the tool itself is agnostic. So I'll show you how I use it to create a kind of blind faith, quote unquote, in my audience and use that to sell more of my courses, you know, without turning into a murder, murderous, murderous psychopath. Again, that's in lesson number two as well. I'll also show you what I call the Gary Vee marketing method. So this is a single sentence from one of Gary Vee's old speeches that turned into a marketing method that's earned me tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars in course revenue. It's now my most effective method and the primary way that I sell my courses. And oddly enough, it's almost entirely hidden from public view. So nobody knows that I'm doing it and I've never revealed this before. So this will be the first time I've ever revealed this strategy in detail and I show you what it is and then how you can easily set this up for yourself to sell your courses. That is in lesson number seven. I'll also show you a course naming hack developed by the king of online dating to slice through all the noise and command attention, even in the most crowded niches. As you probably are aware, everybody and their brother's dog sister is creating a course, it seems like. Well, how do you get people's attention in that environment? In, in that environment? Well, a, sedu a seductive course name is half the battle. I'll show you a simple course naming methodology that I learned from the man that's almost universally agreed upon as the king of the ultra-crowded online dating niche that can not only help you slice through all the noise and get people to pay attention to you in your course, but can also turn those who do take your course into raving fans and lifelong customers. Again, that's in lesson number four. I'll also show you the secret to crisp audio even in noisy environments. So I live on a farm. There's horses, there's dogs, there's chickens. Like I've had my one-year-old daughter uh, running around screaming half the time. And my rec my recording studio has a refrigerator in it that kicks on periodically. I have a fairly loud air conditioner in here. And the whole thing isn't soundproof. 
yet I'm able to still create clean audio that passes even the strict standards of sites like Udemy and Skillshare. So I'll show you how I do that without a bunch of expensive equipment or software so you realize you don't have to go out and have some expensive studio to, to record. You can sit down likely at the desk that you already work at and record and be just fine if you know how to set a few specific things up and I'll show you how to do that. Also show you a peculiarly sounding, peculiar sounding course format. This is used by popular YouTuber Brad Travesy and it helps you to make your courses more engaging, more fun, and more beloved by students without you jumping around like a, a cricket on crack or, or, or whatever. And there's a reason Brad is so popular and everyone unanimously agrees his coding tutorials are some of the best. He consistently uses this weird sounding but simple format to cram his tutorials with value. So I'll show you what it is and how to use it to make uh, courses that your audience will love in lesson number three. I'm also just going to uh, hand you on a silver platter 10 red hot course topics. So these topics, they span multiple niches and disciplines, so not all of them are going to apply to you. But if you have even cursory knowledge of any one of them, you could create a course knowing that there's a market of, of pr prospects hungry for this type of information and remove all the guesswork when picking a topic. And that's in lesson number two. I'm also going to show you the underachiever method of online course creation. I'll show you how I crank out high quality courses month after month after month while still only working a few hours a day and running a wholly separate freelance business. And the thing about this is time is my most valuable as asset. If creating courses meant I had to work 10 or 12, hell, even eight hours a day, I wouldn't do it. So I'll show you my highly streamlined method so you can add this lucrative uh, revenue stream to your business without adding a bunch more hours to your workday. I'm also gonna walk through and show the exact equipment, software, settings, all of the nerd stuff that I use when creating every type of video, talking head videos, slide presentations, the audio recordings, all of that. What microphone I use, what cameras, how I design my slides, how to create clean audio with just a couple minutes of editing, all the geeky tech info your little heart desires. Now, I didn't create a bunch of walkthroughs and turn this into a 20 hour course. I didn't want to do that. But I'll tell you what I use, what equipment software I use, how I set the settings, and most importantly, how to streamline it, streamline it all to make your recording, editing, and publishing process as quick and smooth as possible so that you can knock out course after course after course without a bunch of technical overhead. And so look, there's there's a bunch more in the course uh, that, that, that I'll teach you. I'm not going to go through all of it here. Um, but if you would like to learn more uh, about this course, if you're interested in it, then I, I have a sales page that I put together that kind of has all the info on it. Um, you can find that at myjohn.us slash sane. That's myjohn.us slash S-A-N-E. That'll give you all the information on what's in the course, the pricing, terms, all of that stuff. So if you're interested, go ahead and, and, and check that out. Again, it's myjohn.us slash sane. I'll drop a link in the description as well. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.